focus of it was the, the delicate balance between improvisation and fixed composition with special references to the problems that he was going about solving in his own music, which was, which was a revelation, right? because he gave us an idea of how he puts his own ideas together, sometimes in a fixed form, and, and then it works, he works his way the improvisations are then based upon some of the fixed material, and it works the other way around. An improvisation which comes first and results in, in fixed compositions thereafter. So it's it's a beautiful interchange between the, the art of improvisation and the traditional compositional technique of fixing things in notation. Well, you were teaching or encouraging some of these musicians in composition and improvisation. Indeed. 45 years ago, right? 45 years ago. <laughs> Almost to the to this year, uh, it, exactly. And uh, Roscoe, I had the pleasure and, and, and very good luck and to, to have one of my students uh, at, the, uh, at the Wilson Junior College, which was on the south side of Chicago, and drew from a very uh, fine cadre of young musicians coming out of Chicago's good schools at that time, DuSable and Phillips, uh, and even Inglewood uh, High School. And fortunately, I was in. A very good position. My first college teaching position <laughs> was was there at the junior college, and uh, I was able to put together some ensembles, which uh, were, were uh, I think, a, break, a breakthrough for the junior college system at that time. Both both doing more or less traditional straight ahead stuff, but on Wednesday afternoons we we had a, a head knocking session that we used to do, and uh, 1960 as you very well know as a historian yourself, uh, 1960 was a breakthrough year in terms of the way the music was going with the Miles album, the Train album, and Ornette's albums, all coming in a little cluster of years, right, right. 59 and 60. But was Roscoe, were you, got, were you working with this idea of, of improvisation and fixed composition too at that time? Was that in the air for I, you? Well, for me, I, I was still a, a a trumpet player playing in all kinds of contexts, uh, commercially, and, and uh, learn, trying to learn my own my own craft. But at, at the same time, I was giving them to the best of my own experience uh, some some very important ideas about the way composition works, uh, particularly from uh, two sources that I use primarily: uh, the, 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 the books and works of Paul Hindemith and those of Arno Schoenberg. Uh, who, who surprising most people has written extensively on traditional harmonies as well as Paul Hillman. So here are two of the cutting edge people in the first half of the 20th century who were writing uh, uh, tomes, educational tomes, about how to, how to uh, go through the traditional materials efficiently, effectively, and to go on from there. And Hindemith was here, right? Did you know him? Hindemith was at Yale. Oh. Uh, no, I did not know him. Paul Hindemith. But that's the story that Andrew Hill says that he was, you know, ran into, he was discovered by Hindemith here. And Hindemith, I, I have a video of Hindemith conducting the uh, Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Well, he did, he, he certainly came to Chicago and, and because his own compositions were being featured by the orchestra. Uh, but but as, a, as a resident faculty member, he was, he was at, uh, at Yale. Uh, and, I see. Uh, but, you know, I could have I missed an opportunity when he was maybe here. And Schoenberg, of course, was uh, located in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both of them were very much interested, in spite of their own uh, personal directions, very much interested in training young musicians in how to to cope with the harmonic materials of the, of the traditional music, and then taking it, taking it off from there. How do you use those materials, and then go off from that into your own personal explorations? I don't know of any other organization than the ASCM that's really focused on uh, that problem uh, for this length of time and uh, without imposing a single a single aesthetic, you know? Would you agree with that? Yes, yeah, that's true. They, they draw, and still do, from a wide spectrum of sources and influences without focusing uh, exclusively, having a kind of uh, uh, dictatorial attitude towards what's permitted and what isn't. And certainly that's borne out in every performance you ever hear. It's this absolute freedom to draw upon many different resources. Uh, tonight's an evidence of the full spectrum of that idea. Thanks, Dick. That's great. My Thank pleasure. You.